Hey, there we go. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Sweet. What's up, man? What's up? Can you guys hear me? Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. So let me just get Sorry all this. Sorry about that. Out. I was chilling on Google Meet, wondering why you guys weren't signing in yet, and I realized I had the wrong link and everything. So. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, that <laughs> happens. First of all, uh, Tyler, let me apologize for my uh, my background. I'm in the middle of uh, reworking things, so now it's just cars in my garage, and dude, that is it's not cool. as cool as it used to be. Well, yeah, the cars those cool. are those are dope backgrounds. Got guitars and then cars. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I got my old school five O back there, man. All right, so cool. Uh, we are live on the Bullhorn app, and people can call in. They can chat. Uh, they can ask questions and whatnot. And uh, we're just going to fire this thing off and uh, do our thing. Are, are you ready? Yeah. Well, first of it. all, hi, man. I am JP. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, dude. Thank you guys for having me on. What a cool yeah. thing. Dads in their garages talking to each other. Well, typically I'm Dads like on a their dad corners or, or a really cool background. And you know what I mean? This is oh, a, little, yeah. a little sneak view into my life i guess that's and, cool uh, they're working on backgrounds but yeah i'm just i'm i'm a sucker for perfectionism sometimes and this ain't cutting it when it comes to a background or a at least setting. it's not have you seen those people with like the fake backgrounds but they look like they could be in their living room and you're that's like what oh, i'm talking really about. dope living oh you have that's that what I do and then all of a sudden there's a time. glitch and you're like wait a minute that's your <laughs> living room dude yes. anyway. <laughs> i got a really yeah. good one where it's on the beach that's, but oh, the cool. guy never walks he's just standing still for an hour yeah. long, you know? oh, and the clouds funny. don't move but yeah all right man let's oh, do this thing funny. cool all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dad Cash. This one is special. We are live on the Bullhorn app where you can comment with your questions. You can call in. You can interact and participate. Fun, fun stuff. I am JP. He is Nick. Nick, how are you, man? I'm so good. Good, man. Good to yeah. hear. Today on the show, we are stoked and honored to have american singer songwriter uh he's a tv and movie star you may have seen him on such shows as one tree hill and of course he played thank you very much elvis in walk the line welcome tyler hilton man how are you thank you guys i appreciate it good thank you for Hanging coming out. on man so the premise of dad cast if you weren't already aware is just a couple of dads who like to talk with other celebrity dads and talk about all things dad your path your adventure your journey now we do tend to that. go off the rails sometimes on the show tyler so and by sometimes i mean pretty much every single time so <laughs> want to be forewarned and the rite of passage it. the very first question and i'll stop talking is are you a dad oh yeah I'm a dad to a two and a half year old girl. Ooh, wow, that's awesome. the only one? Two and a half? Yeah, a two and a half year old girl. Yeah. We're gonna wait till uh we see what happens with like the hospitals and the pandemic till we think about or you know, it'd, it'd be great if we could plan it to, for this whole thing to be kind of overish and then we go for another one. But yeah, we want more for sure. But yeah, we had her um right before literally like in December 2019. So yeah, it was so just you guys were lucky, yeah. We had yeah, my we were lucky, and then I've had this weird dad experience where we talk about it all the time. Where it's like we've been—I mean, she and I are so close, but we've been in such a bubble. You know, all those things that you would, I guess, normally do with kids around two. I don't know. It's, just, it's all kind of different, you know. But it's been its own special thing. And now I don't know if we go back to the real world. I don't know, kind of like who, even who I would be or whatever, because I'm so I'm such a dad now. You know what I mean? Like twenty four right? seven. For like two and a half years, which I didn't, I didn't see coming. I didn't see it being like a twenty-four hour brain job. You know that you're thinking about it your entire life, forever. You know it's wild. Right? It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's and you're just getting started, man. Yeah. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I can't even imagine. So my yeah. wife and I, we just had a, a we have a almost two year old. He was born right in the midst of the pandemic and ended up in the NICU. Wow. So I didn't get to see him for like three months. No. So it was so it was so weird, like just navigating those waters of having the hospital call me at work. Hey, come down and you get you have one hour and that's it. 
so I got like one hour oh, a week. My. And then, what you guys couldn't have family there, anything like that? To no. Have? So my yeah. wife fought to stay with him. They wanted my wife and I both to leave, and he was going to stay in the NICU by himself until he was better. And so she fought to stay there, and I was like, you know what? If they let you stay, stay. I'll see him when yeah. I can see him. That was like wow. totally That's yeah. amazing. They let her stay. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah, so weird. Like just everything with the pandemic and just kind of like we're actually trying to have another one right now. So I'm like, man, That's really cool. scared of what happens if we go backwards and you know the whole lockdown thing happens again. And it's I know we're at that weird point where it's like, do you? I mean, at what point do you, you just go? I'm just going to keep going on with my life and you know right. see what happens. And it's just. That's what's been so weird about this whole thing. I call it like the let's just wait two weeks pandemic. I've been saying <laughs> let's just wait a couple weeks for like two, two, two weeks to slow the spread. Yeah. Is, that's yeah. what they it. And it's and two like, years. I, I really feel like in a couple weeks we'll know more. I even feel that now. And I'm like, I, I don't know. It's just wild. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's, if that's, that's wild. If there's any silver lining, Nick, uh, with what you just said about, you know, the fear of the unknown, it's really not a fear of the unknown, man. You have lived it. You have been through it. Right. Uh, you have experienced having a child in the midst of a global pandemic. So yeah. I, I don't think there's any issue, man. I think you got this. And if I'm thinking there isn't birth and just kind of handle the stuff at home and yeah. figure it out as we go. And hopefully this one comes out. Okay. Instead of having some issues. So what, what cool stories though, for that, for their like own personal legends, you know, like they're, they're the, the story like they're going to build their whole lives on starts in such a wild way. You know, I mean, I guess their whole generation will, so it won't be that special, but that generation is just so interesting in that way, you know, and yeah. the parent in relationship for everyone over the past couple of years, I imagine is so crazy. Like, so my two year old, like your kids are going to have like me home every hour of every day for like two years. Like who gets yeah. that? That's wild. You know? Right. I mean, that's um, gotta be the like, coolest thing to come out of the pandemic though, is more yeah. time with the kids instead of, you know, I, I took a year and a half off from work because the the field I was in just kind of died because of the pandemic. So I, I was able, once he got home from the hospital, I've been home with him ever since. I just recently went back to a full-time job. So that's wow. been really cool to bond with him for a year and a half, basically, and just really get to know him and kind of just be a I know, so, dad. Dude, how lucky. For, same thing with me, like being a touring musician, like it just died off, you know, for the pandemic. And then it was like, and I'm thinking, when else would I have had? right time when you know what i've ever taken honestly two years off from touring to like it's just wow yeah that's cool that's that cool. topic has come up on with quite a few guests and uh usually when it comes with the question is how did you handle you know being a touring musician no work and the light you know if you want to look at the positive is that exact thing all yeah. of us got to whether we wanted to or not expected it to or not got to be at home and it was it was a blessing uh yeah. there's times when you know at least in my case where it was please for the love of god can school please start and can they leave oh for god. just a little bit but uh you got it easy man you said a little, little, little baby growing around i know I, I can't imagine if you had elementary school kids or high school kids or middle i mean the whole thing i can't <laughs> how old are your kids uh 17 11 and 8 oh the yeah gamut. so i, I I run the whole gamut. Exactly. And and I yeah. wanted to also mention that to you. That what, What's your little girl's name? Winnie. Winnie? Uh, yeah. She's going to be 17 one day, Tyler. So I just... <laughs> not to yeah. like put any yes. negative... So just like JP, I, I have the whole gamut too. Like I've got... Really? Like my baby, then I've got 15 to 23 are the oh, ages of my okay. kids. Wow. So yeah. I, I'm, and we're going to... Nick knows about <laughs> how did you I'm, I'm so how did you navigate the high school thing the last couple of years that it's, is it was wild yeah, it was definitely rough like my kids were very involved in like sports and and marching band and stuff and it was done like there was nothing so like oh. they're you know all of a sudden they're going to tournaments going to this and that and then nothing so it, and then staying home all the time and I, I think the social part of it was like the hardest of okay, you can talk to your friends on social media, you can talk to them via text, but nope, you're not going to their house. You're not going to go hang out at the mall. You're not going to go to see a movie. Now, I wonder if that means this next college generation is going to be like wild. Like, I, I don't know. We don't know what the ramifications are culturally, but wouldn't that be interesting if you could see these high school kids, no one got to hang out for like four years, and then whatever this 
you know, whoever starts college like 2023, 2024, like I wonder if it's just going to be like Animal House for four years. Like no doctors are going to come out of that class. It's just going to be I hope so. for like <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. Social explosion. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope uh, yeah. Trojan really <laughs> stock goes up too as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, really yeah, that's the next stock I'm going to buy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh All man. right, so, Tyler, I got a question. I, I, I want to yeah. take it back. Give or take three years ago, it was a fateful day, and uh, you were let known that you were going to become a dad. Can you relive that day, that moment? How did it happen for you, and uh, how did you feel? Uh, yeah, I we, we were uh, – we were trying. And so we were kind of like a lot of it was kind of, I got to make some of that decision of like, okay, we're doing this before. Um, and we, I remember she, I think she took a test and my wife's like pretty mellow. Like I, I'm the one that like gets crazy about stuff. And she uh, showed me the test and was like, it's positive. And I was just like, you know, I, I you know, we, we both cried. It was like just super heavy moment. The crazier moment though is you know, she's pregnant, this, and I'm feeling this duty, and I'm like, you know, reading all the books and getting all into it. But then when I saw this one sonogram they sent where it was like from a profile and it looked right. like a little me, I, it was like the first time it all hit me. Like everything until then was all just mental. It was like science, you know, there's this seed I'm taking care of, and, you know, I, I don't know. And then I saw this face and it was like, it, that was like the moment. And I remember my wife sent me the picture. And I took a picture of my face right then as I was watching it because I was like, I was stunned. And so I happened to have this picture, you know, because it was just, I feel like that was the moment that hit me that I was like, oh my God, there's this person that I'm about to like shepherd, you know, that's yeah, wild. Right. It you know? is. It Not is just absolutely. an idea, like one day I'm going to with this with my kid or one day my kid, like you have this idea, but like there is no like kid. It's going to be this individual person that all of a sudden you have to like reconcile with it every it's like so wild you know it's so much less control and more responsibility than i thought and you know and it all happened just seeing that face like oh man it's real wow it is it's amazing and man we're 12 minutes into this podcast and i can say unequivocally without any shadow of any doubts that you sir are what dads need to be all dads <laughs> Period. You know, the ones that are into it, the ones that are excited for it, the ones that take that responsibility. And that's kind of why we're doing this show, man, to shed a little light on. Really cool. Hey, man, we, <laughs> this is a pretty important role and uh, we take it very seriously. And it is the hardest dang job you'll ever love. I got a shirt. I didn't wear it today, but it says that. That's a great saying. That's true. It, and it, I've, I was thinking that this is the hardest I've ever worked or thought. It's the hardest job I've, uh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's really. Beautiful. And wait till she's 17. Man, Nick, uh, Tyler, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to navigate what I'm about to tell you without incriminating anything, uh, because this one is not something that I can openly share to the world, but I do need to talk about it. Um, so the 17 year old, I, I'm going to leave out some details, but, uh, she drove halfway across Oregon um to do something she wasn't supposed to do she was told not to do she knew this is something you're not supposed to do yet did it anyway and then drove all the way back lied about it Ooh. and we're now sitting in a point where and to, and to give you a little uh, pull back the curtain a little bit for you tyler uh my oldest is my stepdaughter so she sh shares time with dad and over here and he's a great guy. He's a good dad. He's there. He does his thing. Uh, parenting rules are a little bit different from house to house, but she's oh, currently yeah. over there right now. And I am so afraid for when she gets back over here because, you know, things are not going to be very pleasant, man. And who? It's, and that's it's, like it's, almost like an adult you're dealing with when you're dealing yeah, with like teenagers. That that's is wild. Where you have to tiptoe. Because yeah. she, she will be 18 in December. And hey, man, we were all that age. We, <laughs> right? Uh, she feels like she needs more freedom. And she's almost to that point where we can't tell her what to do. Uh, and it's all these things you need to balance. And this particular set of scenarios that happened is not good. Okay? They, they were just not a good thing. And... I don't know how I'm going to navigate it, man. I, tune in in the next episode to find out how JP handles it. I don't it. even know like, what kind of advice to give you because I'm kind of dealing with the same thing with my 17-year-old where 
she right. like ran back to her mom's house and is hasn't been home in three weeks because she's mad at me because I took away her car for disobeying and coming home past curfew. So it's and like that's how, another thing. We threatened to take the car away. You know what she said? No. Like yeah. it's, what? So it, it's, it's, I, I took the battery out of the car. <laughs> the I'm like, now what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. There you go. And they might yeah. have to go that route, but yeah, Tyler, yeah, she's I, I got to take like a class in negotiating or something like that when she's in middle school or elementary school. Yeah. Or some yeah. Kind of like, and everyone's different, you know, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I, up until I can't they're, imagine. Like 15, they're your best friend. They're your princess. You're the king. And then all of a sudden 15 and a half hits. And you're like, you're the worst person in the world for, I'm hoping it goes away soon, but man, it is just so yeah. hard to, Wow, get that is crazy. Yeah, and all that like teen angst that we felt, and all that stuff that drives rock and roll and every kind of pop music ever. It's all that <laughs> huge force against you as a parent. All of a sudden, you're on the other side of that glass. Yeah. You know, you've got that right? entire culture of like against you now. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like that's yeah. so wild. And when we were that age, it was that would never happen. I'm gonna be the uh, nope. Yeah. It's just a vicious, vicious circle. And uh, I'm just thankful I still have my wow. eight-year-old to hold on to and be like, okay, you know, at least like, you still, still dig me, me right? Yeah, we're, you we're still, still buds, right? <laughs> and you don't get in trouble very often. And I had a conversation with her in the car this morning on the way to drop her off from school, and I said, "Baby girl, you've been seeing what's going on, and you know, we try to keep the the bad away from their ears and eyes, but you know, she's not stupid. Their kids are sponges." And I said, "I, I just really hope." when you get older that you are still going to love me like you do now and you make good decisions, just make good decisions. You know, you're going to make mistakes. It happens. It's part of life. And don't ever be afraid to talk to your papa. Cause that's what I'm here for. Even if you think you're going to be in trouble. Whew. So yeah, that's what wow. we're dealing with right now. All right. Back to Tyler. That's wild. That's, wild. that's no, backing that's it up. So you found out you got that picture taken. Things are real for you. Fast forward nine months. The day of delivery. How'd that go for you, man? Were you there? Yeah, so nervous. And this is this is the beautiful part too. Is that my grandma is like one of my, my favorite person in the world, and she's passed away since the pandemic happened. She was like ninety two, but she was at the hospital, and she was walking around raring to go right up until the end. So she was at the hospital with my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my wife's parents, like everyone was there at the hospital you know and that's like i didn't think to appreciate that at the time you know I, I, and i'm so glad we have these pictures and stuff. anyway it was it was great and i i was i was so i was so alert i felt like it was like what i can only imagine like hunting in the winter forest feels like like just like <laughs> like every detail like a nurse would come in i'd be like you know uh I think Tyler I just learned real quick. A Raptor right yeah, there. I was like, there was so much happening. I was, and it's also my first, you know. And I mean, it it was just a, it was like a fire hose of just like, listen up, son. You know, like just here we go. And also, like, also this woman that you love is about to go through the craziest thing she's ever gone through in her life. So you're you're kind of like, you know, you're, which actually helped me relax a little bit and take it off myself. But anyway. uh, it was uh anyway i was very very uh alert and on edge and like ready to go and just like so amped for it, it was it was something it was something good stuff so that's what we like to hear man that is just yeah, I, awesome. I will say though that the, the funny thing was, dad, by the way dude thank you I, I was i was so so after you know she was born it was like the you know beautiful and um on my way home when they released us from the hospital all of a sudden i got this wave of dizziness where i thought like i'm about to have to drive this baby through the world back to our house. And I thought like, how am I gonna drive this baby? Do I know how to drive? Am I gonna be able to stay alert enough to get home? And so I told my dad, I was like, you gotta follow me home. Like you gotta tell me, cause like, I'm, I'm literally afraid I'm gonna pass out in the car. And so Megan's in back with the baby. I'm like 10 and two, like mouth so dry, like so nervous. My dad's like driving 10 miles an hour right behind me. And we like drive, you know, she was born in Beverly Hills. We live in the Valley of LA. So to drive through Beverly Hills, Hollywood, onto the 101 with this like tiny baby. It was like the most nerve wracking moment of my life. That drive. I was moment. just yeah. on the 405 four days ago. I get it. Crazy. I grew up in LA, man. So I know exactly where. Yeah. And, it's, and so especially that drive, like you're, you're like, you know, San Vicente and you're no know, Beverly. And it's like, it's just cars everywhere. And all of a sudden you're so hyper aware. You have this right. precious little thing in the backseat and 
Oh my God. Anyway, well, if 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 an experienced dad such as myself and Nick could offer you a bit of advice, um, if you do end up having another child, I assure you that what you just experienced gone. This one's be like throw in the back. We're good. Let's nice. go. Nice. It's, it's like <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, because it's like my first time with a car seat, the whole thing. So I'm like, you sure it's tight? You know what I mean? Like you're right. By the time the second or third one comes in, you're yeah. Like, you realize they bounce. It's all good. It's yeah, cool, they cool, they're cool. they're they're cushiony. Heck, yeah. you just throw them back there with a hamster wheel and a drip. You're fine. It's all good. You know. <laughs> my little guy has this thing about climbing on the highest chair, table, or couch he can find and jumping off. That's that's really? his thing. And I'm How like, old is he? He's uh, almost two, like 20 months right now. Wow. And I'm like, dude, that's gonna hurt. He's like, no, dad. Boom. <laughs> you should get. You know, I've heard about those climber babies. She wasn't one girl, of those, but we we we. That's it's cool. scary. It's his yeah, girl. He's like a, your boy, a little betrothal. I mean, maybe early for that. But, hey, you know. <laughs> I, I dig that. What, what, what do you have to offer? I mean, what's what's the dowry, Nick? Couple yeah, goats, yeah. Pigs, horses, goats, what, a cow. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a card yeah, to sweeten the deal. <laughs> we are live on the Bullhorn app with Mr. Tyler Hilton of One Tree Hill fame, singer songwriter. He was in Walk the Line. He played Elvis. Um, everyone listening right now, feel free to call in with your questions. Chat us up uh, if that's something you'd like to do. If you have a question for Tyler, I see you all. I see there's people listening, so don't be shy. Feel free to oh, join man. in. Um, while we wait to see if that happens, I have a quick little thing I'd like to drop a uh, part of our sponsorship here with you, Ty- or not with you, Tyler, but with Dadcast. Um, Dadcast and Save Homefront or hashtag SHFD are excited to announce how you can aid in their programs and mission. Now, the mission of SHFV to provide society with an authentic depiction of the U.S. veteran to preserve our history, create business opportunities, and improve our image through arts and entertainment. You can follow their page um, at the link we have up on our website, dadcast.co. And we can't tell you why yet, okay? But something amazing is coming very, very soon for our dads here in Oregon and California. Um, It's information on a contest. And that's all I can say at this point. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. In the meantime, uh, we are proud to launch our official shirt benefiting our U.S. veteran charity Save Home Front. Um, it will be available on the website very, very, very soon. And those are only details I can give right now. Okay. With that being said, SHFE, Save Home Front. You're amazing. Thank you. We're so proud to be partnered up with you guys. Whoo. Okay. Right. Man. The so commit- I got something. So oh, you got something. Okay. About probably 12 years ago, I actually brought you into Grants Pass, Tyler, to play a show at a little tiny venue in Grants Pass, Oregon. No way. Yeah. So the venue was probably, I think, 75 was the cap on it. It was just a little tiny venue downtown. It was like you were like one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And Wait, like, when I, was I, this? Like 2000? What, when was this? God, it would have been 2000, 2010? 2009, maybe. Oh. Yeah, I, think, I think you were still on One Tree Hill back then. Um Oh, okay. Just it was just a little tiny venue. It was like really cool, kind of a kind of a thing we were doing back in the day. No way. Yeah, dude, that's cool. What a small world. Yeah, yeah. So when I when you responded on Instagram, I'm like, oh, sweet. It's so cool. Dude, that you that's can, cool. Just, so yeah. are you guys both in Oregon? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Southern Oregon, about you know, thirty miles above the border of California on the I five. Uh, so, and he's just all us Hiltons right are like leaving California, going to uh, Oregon. Like, my cousin moved to Portland. My uncle just moved to Bend. I, I oh, feel sweet. like there's other people just like thinking about Oregon now. Everyone's like thinking about that. That's cool. Well, That's you've cool. been here. It's pretty it's awesome. Beautiful. And and I'm I, like I said, I'm a Southern California kid as well. I spent 30 years of my life before I eventually made my way here. And I just took my kids on spring break. That's why I was in L.A. We spent four days at Disneyland. Uh, five kids. Or not five wow. kids, five of us, three kids in the back of uh, a Tesla, which is right yonder. Not that one, but that one. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that for the record. Okay. Not a 12 hour and three kids in the back. Of, nope. Nope. Next time we're taking the SUV. You know, silly me for wanting to save money on gas and take the I would electric. recommend flying. But I would not even recommend driving. Yeah, that too. Uh, uh-huh. But the second, the second we got in LA and I'm back, you know, in my old stomping grounds and I hit the 101 and eventually the 405, I was like, yep. 
I remember why I left. Wow. It is, if I could pinpoint it, it literally is the traffic. That, that is so crazy. And you know, I think about it. I, I went from driving, what, at least two hours a day mm -hmm. in LA going anywhere. I don't know. And at least an hour a day in the car, you know, and yeah. there's no way to haven't driven hardly at all in like two years. Like that's such a strange thing. It, that, that's that's a huge change or something else you were saying earlier that made me think the other thing about dads that's such a big change is like what a huge change for probably a ton of men over the last pandemic you know what i'm saying like staying home and mm -hmm. just what a what a different point of view you know what i mean it's just that, that that's the, in the minority culturally you know what i mean that kind of you know dudes being at home and uh just what a what an interesting culture shift it's been a huge eye-opening thing for me you know like really interesting but anyway yeah same were thing you, with driving like totally. were you still able to uh perform uh during the pandemic did you do any online events in, in, that they got very very popular during that time yeah i started a patreon and doing uh like monthly concerts on my patreon which i still do and i'll probably keep that up forever like I actually really liked it i thought it was going to feel really stale and not cool and it's not the same as performing live but it's definitely something totally different that i now i don't want to stop doing so <laughs> right kind of cool and i never would have got into that other than the pandemic i would have been like no i'm not doing that sounds dumb or something but i love it um so that's been cool but um there's been such a shift like because oh well, the main thing is my wife's career totally started taking off as the pandemic happened. So she's a writer director. So she's been getting tons of writing jobs, directed a couple um, movies, won, won an award. And so she's yeah. doing all this other stuff. So she's full time, like on the phone writing. So that's the other thing that made this different for us is at some point I shifted totally over to just doing total domestic stuff. And for a while, the wild thing is, is, you know, in a lot of ways I'm growing up for the first time because I spent so much time on the road. I didn't do a ton of housework or anything like that and i went full on from being on the road for years to being um you know cooking cleaning uh baby like that's the vibe and mom mom comes home at like six when the last phone call seven if you know like full right. on so you know the nature of our business is everything's kind of like flowing and different but i've been in that world and um love it love it never would have guessed in a million years how like peaceful and zen and kind of like cool it is to just have this schedule and be in this like total domestic routine but um anyway just such an interesting like eye-opening thing for me like really cool really i cool. agree man i've you know I, i've helped you know, my responsibilities shift when it comes to the lady and the kids and whatnot but a lot of the time it's it's doing those exact duties and and i realized that if you do enough of the work on monday or all of it and with you only having one Bro. kid who's still a baby, you have a whole lot of really fun free time rest of the week if you if you strategize and do it right. Now, now there's three kids and not so much, but you know, done right, it it can be very relaxing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm by no means saying it's not hard work. The single moms out there and all the oh, hands down that's what i was thinking i yeah. was like wow i total new respect for anyone that's Great. ever done that yeah. ever been like i can't even imagine it feels like more ju juggling more to me than like a top ceo would do like the busiest i've ever been on the road i can't imagine juggling. anyway it's wild juggling yeah. those kind of projects it's wild. and after doing it for a while and then having the opportunity to go back to a work job where i left the house uh there were times where i was actually looking forward to going to work because home was a whole lot yeah. of work but again if you strategize and you do it right yeah it it's it's it can be very relaxing it would be cool to bring back home economics you know because oh, the right? truth is between what cleaners to use where and when and like <laughs> um keeping a house budget uh right? cooking i mean so many things like that what the proper way to beat a rug or something i don't know like just the stuff that we're all into like youtube at some point like couldn't you like throw us a bone early in life and like get us going on all that stuff like anyway it's that i maybe after this pandemic there will be a renewed importance on it because we've all definitely gotten a big you know good look at it it's crazy well i think i just came up with a brand new youtube channel domestic dad domestic dad instructions <laughs> on how to do all <laughs> things that mom used to do but now we get to do i you know how many it's either that or a sitcom one of the two but i like that <laughs> title <laughs> <laughs>
I'll do the sitcom too, domestic <laughs> dad. Mm. Now that you know it, in six months, we're going to see that up there. And we're, totally. damn, we missed our shot. Right. Okay, man. I, I, Nick, I, I kind of want to shift gears just a tad since we have Tyler on the show. And this is about the off the rails part I was talking about earlier. And we're about halfway through the show already. So I want to talk about music and, 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 and television and all that good stuff. So I guess to start right off the bat, where are you at right now with the music career? Any actual live shows coming up anytime in the near future? And if so, where and when and how can we get there? Uh, you still doing my Patreon live shows, right? And um, the next one is Thursday. I uh, mean, like you know, like a venue. Concerts. Oh, the next venue is. I think I'm not playing a show again till like March of next year. Like, I'm, wow, I'm totally, okay, so you get another yeah. year with the baby. All right, yeah, we actually yeah, might have to to fix that. We might I'm have chilling. to hit up your agent and see if we can pull you into this big event that we have coming up. <laughs> oh, that could be cool. That could be cool, Nick. You promise? Yeah, just do I know. This. <laughs> don't don't say a word we're just going to continue this podcast but <laughs> my word to say anything it, it, it is amazing and 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 it would be it would be pretty cool but we'll just leave that at that yeah your agent's going to call That's you cool. later <laughs> 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 all right um any any new uh acting gigs in the pipeline no, or is that no, are, I, are you I've, done with I've that kind or? of like no i've just like i'm just taking a break for a second because uh until we can figure out we got to figure out our kind of like dynamic now family. -wise. See, Megan's totally busy. I mean, now she's booked doing movies the rest of the year. And so everything's kind of changed for me now. So I'm trying to figure out how to do it. You know, like I want to be there, especially since she's going to be so busy for the next year or so. So I kind of pushed everything off until next year to kind of make a decision, but I think I'm doing another year of just hanging at home, you know, and I'm writing music and I'm, you know, doing some, you know scoring and stuff like that doing a lot of like music stuff like that working on an album but it's kind of like a different pace you know i'm just like i'm i'm not trying to get anything out i'm really just trying to like raise this girl for a second so i don't know i'm still working it out every day no, that's, it's crazy that's the best awesome. job in the world man but, but as it, as it changed like when i found out her movie was going this summer and she's gonna be filming that then i was like okay let me you know so i'm just kind of taking it as it comes but it's just weird you know it's not like it used to be where everything just made sense you know you just did what your parents did and with these last couple of years like it's just every decision you know it's like now what do we do you know so i don't know wild wild it's you're not alone man i mean heck we started this podcast in the middle of it and it is blown really? up into proportions that i knew would happen uh but not as quick as it did and wow. uh really really cool i mean i have a background in radio Speaking of which, I have I own a radio station. It's called Pirate Radio, P Y R A T E Radio. Free plug. Uh, cool. I would love, with your permission, to put Tyler Hilton music in rotation. Oh yeah, rotate it. Yeah, baby. Everyone, all musicians love that word. They love the <laughs> word rotation. Uh, so, Speaking yeah. of music, we heard that you might play a song for us. A little birdie yeah. just flew over. Now, is that is that is the timing? Is that is that cool? Can that happen yeah. right now? Because yeah, I will sit yeah. back, relax. And Listen to some Tyler Hilton I'll tunes. Shoot. I'll play a song for sure. Let me see if. Uh... Yeah. You guys hear that guitar coming? Through? Yes, very, yeah. very well. It might even be a little hot. Check, check, check. All right. All right. So I wrote this tune. I wrote this tune and I, I did a little music video for it. And uh, my daughter's in it a little bit when she was like first born. But this is called When I See You, I See Him. Now, 
gets so still Somebody, somebody, hold someone Such a place. Tyler Hilton, live on the Bullhorn at Performing on Dad Cats. Thank you so very much, man. That was amazing. That was oh, so good. I, I think that needs to go on pirate radio, like, right now. Oh, um, I, 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 well, Rotating you know, on just, pirate. just give me a minute, okay? <laughs> if I were to do it right, I, 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 I physically could actually do it right now just from the, the handy dandiness of one of these. But, you know, mm, give me a day. We'll put some Tyler Hilton on Pirate Radio. That'd be good stuff, man. Wow. So I know I know the answer to this question, but but I have to ask your your baby girl is starting to become, at least you know, from my experience, a little bit more of aware of her surroundings. Uh, does she realize and understand yet that daddy's a musician? And does she take to it? If so, like I because I, I know you're playing around her. Yeah, she's into it, um, but not as into it as she's into like, like kicking Coco soccer Mellon. balls <laughs> and playing uh, baseball or something. Like she's just, I, I was, I, maybe you, you guys know this more than I do, but it, it feels like for her so far that she keeps going through different phases, you know, where she's like super interested in something and super not. And so mm-hmm. at, at first she'd be going through a phase and I'd be like, ah she's going to be a baseball player or then she goes and i'm like she's going to be and then it's over in like a week you know so right like she's in she sings all the time i can't get her to play my guitar um or play piano but she like sings nonstop. and then while she's potty training right now um she wants me to be uh playing my guitar and singing while she's on the toilet so well if it helps do it it's my role yeah. yes i'm doing it Yes. So, I got the guitar set up right next to my closet where the toilet <laughs> is because that's where she likes to go so I've got the guitar right next to the. Actually, it's funny to even be saying this out loud because it's just like our our like world or whatever. But yeah, this and then she'll go life, in. Man, yeah, she'll be like, get the guitar. She'll like just say that, and I'll get the guitar. I'll stand outside the closet and be like, be it, see bit, see spot, and then it's all going down. It's like wild. It's a wild oh, day. I wish we had it that easy. Nick, sorry man, you had a question. Do you, uh, do you guys watch Coco Melon? I just, I need to know if somebody, anybody else feels my pain. No, no, I, I think I'm trying to like steer it away because it's it, it's like it, it feels like daggers in my brain or something and my <laughs> eyes. It's like so much. But she's into like Mother Goose Club, and that's okay. like seems cool. It's like these kids skipping around singing nursery rhymes and yeah, and that that seems cool. I made the mistake of like thinking Coco Melon was like the coolest thing in the world, and I turned it on for him when he was like six months old, and it's been oh. a year of 
freaking cocoa melon and years. Yeah, almost two years of cocoa melon. <laughs> like every time we go to the store now, we have to buy. No, 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 no. You do, see, I've had, I've been having this argument with him. Yes, we don't have to, but I'm like one of those dads where it's like he gives you that. Look. <laughs> you are, Nick, you are an enabler. Oh, yeah, maybe <laughs> you are 100 percent an enabler, and you complain about what you enable. No, that is you get all psychology on you here. Is that even a word? Wow. Like, man, it's uh, and I feel like they just make up songs about the most mundane things. It'll be like it's we're terrible. walking down the hall, we're walking, right? down, we're opening the blinds, and like it's just every song is so random. Why can't the, and the terrible thing is like the baby will fall asleep and I'll still sit there and watch it? Like, what the hell is wrong with me? Why why am I still enjoying this? <laughs> I know why am I still watching this? I know I right. with that. I did get him into Disney's The Good Dinosaur, though, so I'm kind of stoked on that because that's we're, we're making some progress. Oh, that's cool. It's you know great... what we got real into is uh, so she got so garbage uh, garbage truck day is like a big day uh, of the week here because it's something that happens different uh-huh. every week, you know. And uh, so oh, trash truck day the, the day before it's like a whole thing, and then um, you know the night I'll go to sleep through the morning, you know, like it's the whole vibe. But um, she's obsessed with trash trucks, and I started looking that up on YouTube. And then we found Blippy. Do you guys have you guys seen this? Oh, and yeah. Blippy's all about her. I'm, my kids are old enough now where I'm I'm out of that phase. Oh, you so. missed this. Oh, I have no and idea what like, a Blippy is, but I'm excited. And he's cool. He's just this like dude who like gives these crazy tours of like really interesting stuff. Like a, like a garbage truck will give a tour of the garbage truck and it'll stretch this thing out for like 40 minutes or whatever it's like amazing and you're like and this is the turbine that you know and like the kids are like fascinated and i'm sitting there watching the same thing too like he does that with uh get uh zambonis you know for the yeah. ice does mm-hmm. it like cool yeah love it's, this it's dude. The greatest. <laughs> amazing yeah. nick so there's some all right cool. so have you prepared a fast five for tyler hilton i have but i'm going to talk about great notion brewing real quick though that was you read my mind. So we got another sponsor we're gonna talk about here real quick, Tyler. First of all, Tyler, are you a are you a drinker? Do you like beer on occasion? Uh, you know, I don't drink anymore. I like okay. I, I stopped a while ago, but I all did right. loved it. Right, well, I was gonna say if you still did, this will come in handy right now. But never mind, Nick, have at it. Anyway, so we are sponsored by Great Notion Brewing out of Portland, Oregon. Some of the best beer that I've ever tried. They are a specialty brewery, so you cannot buy it in stores. You have to order it off their app, and they send it direct to your door, and it comes to your door cold. Um, so you want to use the code DADCAST10. Go to their website, greatnotionbrewing.com. You'll get 10% off your purchase, and it'll ship right to your door. Wow. boy, Atta boy, And thank you, Great Notion Brewing. Yeah. I've got a whole box of it sitting right there. And – that we need to unbox open it yet because I gotta make a video about it. But I really, really want to try some of the. I think you pull the box up because the box is really cool. Like so, the all the all the beer cans and the boxes are designed by a super famous skateboard designer. So he oh, actually works by Tony Hawk and Sector Nine, and like the graphics are just incredible. Great oh, notion, great. very cool. Very heavy. So even if you don't drink, just like the cans are like the coolest things I've ever seen. That I, whole thing is so like Oregon to me. Like that yeah. box containing oh, yeah. like yeah. that like micro brew. That's so Oregon yeah. and rad. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so Portland. Yes. It is. Yeah, very Portland. Yeah, very Portland. Are you a movie fan, Tyler? Yeah. What about Star Wars? You big Star Wars guy at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, like I've seen them, and I can't quote everything from it, but yeah, like you know, I've. I just yeah. spent five hundred dollars on lightsabers at Disneyland. Oh dang! <laughs> how did how did how does that happen? How many lightsabers did that get you? What does a well, lightsaber go for? So, well, days? it depends. You know, there's actually a market for it, which I hadn't realized until recently. But uh, so there's a, a a shop inside the park at Disneyland, inside Star Wars Land, which is Galaxy's Edge. It's called Savvy's Workshop, where you can cool. make an appointment and say it's a whole event. It's kind of like a ride. Um, and you make your appointment and you go in it's like 220 dollars per person to build a lightsaber but it's really cool so i did one a couple years ago and my son is now old enough he's 11 it's like dad can we please only thing i want to do is ride this ride and make a lightsaber with you and i'm like absolutely freaking a lightsaber with dad like that's so cool So we went in and it's, you know, there's a big old story to it and, and you get to pick all different kinds and, and combinations of stuff and build the lightsaber. So we built those two, which was 
Okay, I spent more than five hundred dollars for the record. That, that was about five hundred dollars for those two. But then uh, found out that uh, the day we were leaving, the very next day, they were releasing a new limited edition from one of the video games. Anyway, so I had to buy one of those, and uh, it's yeah, Gotta but it was it. really fun and worth it, and memories. And and these things are heavy. We're talking like 15, 20 pound and make like movie prop material. No and way. yeah, not not no cheapy plasticky, you know, Walmart stuff. No offense to Walmart. We love you, Walmart. But uh yeah. Right. This isn't so, a Halloween costume. So Tyler, your next kid, you're gonna have to have a boy because right now you're stuck with Build a Bear. <laughs> yes, you're right, right. Yeah, <laughs> gotta be a whole different thing when it's a dude. I can't even imagine. It's like it's I mean, it's I a whole they're... different ball game, man. You got like a little girl is like you got Barbie, you got all the little girl cool stuff, and then you get a boy, and it's all about sports and wrestling and like just all kinds of crazy stuff. But it's... do you think like uh, the difference between a, a girl kid and a boy kid is the di- is any different than the difference between two girl kids? Like, are they are are even the same gender? Are they each very different from each They're other? Very, you know what very I mean? different. Yeah, you know what it's, I mean. Like, I wonder yeah. sometimes if it's like they're even, just all even like at the like the infant stage when they when they're not talking. It's like it's just it's different. Like the wow. feelings are different that you have. Like, I I don't know. It was it was different for me for a little girl than it was for a little boy. For like a little boy, it's like you got your best friend, your little homie. For a little girl, it's like oh, I got to protect this thing. This like I don't want Whoa. any boys looking at her. Kind of a it was like just a whole different experience, funny, different right? feeling. Yeah. Yeah, and, and same for me. The best way I can describe it wow. is, and, and and Sawyer and Avery and Chloe, this is not playing favoritism. If you ever come, <laughs> this okay. So I, I must be clear right up front that Daddy doesn't love any one of you more than the other. Okay, things are just different. With my son, he was the first child that was mine uh, that I ever had, and it came late in life for me. I was 36 when I had my first kid. And it was just, you know, amazing. And it's a son. And I was the last male to continue the line. So if you want to get back right. in medieval times, the Pierce name will live on. Yeah. So there was those thoughts going through my mind and just proud, proud, proud. I have a son. Felt like Simba and Lion King and just holding him up. But then three years later, hey, I'm pregnant again. And it's a girl. And, and it, it, immediate fear. I mean, it, it was just, oh, gosh, a girl? Oh, no, I can't have a girl. Oh, no, you know, like, I know, oh, man. But over time, it turned into the, I don't know, like you said. Wait, did you know, did you know ahead of time? Because that's the other thing. I actually didn't know. We didn't find out till she came out. So I didn't know that it was going to be a chick till it came out, which is wow. <laughs> I mean, my, I, was, I was ready for whatever, but it was just oh, like, that's wild. That's, yeah. This is a funny story. My lady, uh, it turns out everyone and their mother's mother's best friends, uncles, and nieces knew before me because my lady, sorry, hon, couldn't keep her mouth shut. But she was able to keep <laughs> a secret from me because uh, Christmas 2012, so Christmas morning, my big present from mommy was this intricately wrapped box with bows and whatnot. And I had no idea. And she got her phone out so she could film a reaction. So I knew something crazy was up right then and there. And I open it up, and it is the uh, the, the photo, you know, from in Euro, wow. and and two itty bitty bitty pink shoes, and a perp and a pink bow, and that was how she let me know that we were having a girl, and wow. the emotions that went through my. I mean, you look back at this video, and I guarantee it's not what she was hoping for reaction wise. It was kind of, <laughs> like I said, it was, you know, one of these numbers. And then she turned off the camera. Wait, so did you? Were you finding out you were having a kid at the same time? Like, did you know? No, you no, were no, no. A kid? I knew she was pregnant. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. But but I didn't know that you know boy or girl yet at this point. But she oh, knew three or four man. weeks prior. And like I said, I turns out I found out that everyone else knew before me on Christmas. <laughs> and but yeah, it, it's just a completely different set of feelings. And like I said before, yeah. none are more important than the other. They're just considerably different. But that bond between the daughter is just whoof it is it is powerful and so is my son and my girl likes to draw she brought this to me last night <laughs> that's awesome best dad forever i promise i, I don't I know promise. why she needs to promise me but uh, she, she promised 
because she knows she's going to be 17 someday. That's or awesome. she's already she's super duper smart, so she may be planning something to ask for uh, later. There you go. Yeah, you know, you have to respect. She's got to butter me all up, and then, Dad, can I? And okay, which is you know what I tend to enter. It's funny though; some of those things come. Some of that stuff comes natural, which is so funny. Like she just started doing the dad says yes when mom says no kind of a thing. I was like, nobody taught you that. We're not in school. Like there's no one to input right. anything into your brain except what we're giving you. And she's already coming up with these like things. It's just funny, you know. What was her first yeah. word? Her first word was uh oh, duck. She duck. said duck nonstop for so long. Duck. Now, now in public, was that construed as something else and possibly a cause? No, oh, actually, no, it's funny because uh, so we moved to Canada uh, from California, uh, where my uh, wife's parents are from and her family. And so we're kind of like a, l- a little bit out in the middle of nowhere on this river. And there's ducks everywhere in the summer and when she was kind of that age. And so just ducks all the time everywhere. And she just loved them, thought they were the greatest things ever. Duck. That was what she said. Duck, duck, mom duck, duck, dad. Duck. But then I did get dad that before mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right man it is time for the fast five okay. this is a, a little segment we like to do tyler it's just five random quick questions nothing too deep and personal um cool and then i'm gonna probably add a couple afterwards because that's what i do and let's go I love it. Let's do it, all right cool all right so what is your favorite food to cook for your daughter oh favorite food to cook oh i make these like pancakes that are like uh you know a little bit of like baby oatmeal some egg and banana or whatever and she loves them and she like loves peanut butter eats it so much that's my favorite thing i put a bunch of peanut butter and she thinks it's the greatest thing ever nice all right i'm gonna have to try that one (laughs) i gotta get liam to eat something other than macaroni and cheese and donuts and donuts yeah she just wants to stick her hand in the peanut butter jar she's always like dad can i stick my finger in the peanut butter jar just always (laughs) always ask me that loves it (laughs) nice okay so when you could play music at shows in venues what was your favorite venue to play oh man uh i think uh I mean, the Wiltern Theater in La- in L.A. is probably like the best theater I've ever played. You know, it's to me like I think if a venue gets too big, you lose the vibe. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but like I think bigger than a club and a theater has a special there's something about a theater. I, so I both like seeing shows there, but being on stage there, it's the best. The backstage is just so his- there's something about the Wiltern Theater that will always be like the ultimate venue to me. I saw Beauty and the Beast at the Wiltern. Gosh, 98, 99 ish whoa what like yeah. the, the play they had a play the actual there? play yes wow it was a full production man it was amazing that's cool Big show brandon just came on and said what's up fellas what's up all right <laughs> all right if you could have a billboard with anything on it what would it be and why <laughs> dang man you know what i love about like these questions i always think this when people are asking questions on podcasts i'm listening to i'm like how is this person going to answer this? Like, was he prepared for this? Or like, what's he that's like? the beauty of Fast Five. Um, yeah, you're, no, you're right. That's, that's the vibe. <laughs> uh, I would probably just say like, uh, keep it simple, do good. You know, I think like when things get really complicated to me, I just try to like keep it simple and do good. And that's what I always try to like pay forward with advice. But yeah. Dig I love it. it. That's awesome. All right. Do you prefer acting or singing? Oh, oh, you know, probably singing if I if I had to pick, you know, it's this thing I'll do till the day I die, no matter what. But it's I'm acting so much fun. I would be so sad if I couldn't do both. But yeah, mm-hmm. singing, Sing, right. singing's part of me, you know. All right. What is it, your favorite thing to take your daughter to go do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we walk up to the There's fire there. station right and uh, yeah, <laughs> and we watch the fire truck leave sometimes. That's probably like the most exciting thing we've done in a while. No, but. We, uh, yeah, we go to the fire station as often as we can during the week, and uh, she loves it. It's become, like, our favorite thing to do. Pick out a couple Very rocks, cool. bring them back home for mom. You know, make a whole day out of it. That's awesome. Is that it, Nick? That's it. That's all okay. All right, so I always add a couple. Uh, I'm going to go serious first, and then loosey-goosey right afterwards. All uh, right. This falls right under the category for you. Shouldn't be difficult to answer, Tyler, because you are – in the realm of being a new dad, in my opinion. So with that being said, yes. if you could offer one bit of advice to any guy out there who is a brand new dad or about to become a dad, what would it be? Uh, Like get comfortable with a schedule and like take control of that. Like be like 
I, I'd say the sooner you can put your life on a schedule or like think in terms of schedule, everything will like fall into place. Like when things get chaotic for us or for me, it's because we're like off a of schedule, you know, and, and I wasn't necessarily too into that beforehand, but, um, but uh, that has saved me, especially in the early parts where sleep's all off and whatever. If you could know that there's a couple points, like at this point you're making dinner at this point, you're doing whatever. It just keeps like the world spinning on the axis. So I would say that, and also a diaper caddy. So stupid, but this thing I got from Target, you could bring like diapers and things to any room was so helpful because there would be something would happen in run room and you're like running across the house to this. Oh, crap. Um, the wipes are over there. Yeah. Right. Now I got this mobile caddy I take to my bedroom. I'll take to this room. Everywhere I go, I just take it with me. It's the best. So those two. And I tried to get, I had a few other guys I knew were having kids at the same time. I tried to send them to Target to get them and they didn't get it. And I think they regretted it. But diaper caddy, 10 bucks, save your life. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Target. I'm going to <laughs> Thank <target>. you, Target. <laughs> He's going. All right. Hey, did, oh, so your nice. first diaper change, intimidated? Uh, Okay, so my sister had a kid like a year before we had Winnie, and I knew that this was going to be prep for me. So I like got so into her vibe right off the bat. And, I, you know, A wanted to be like, you know, great uncle or whatever. But I thought I, – so I never changed a diaper, and they taught me. And, I mean, the first time I did it, I was like – I didn't know anything. I'd never even touched a diaper. I'll be honest with you. Since I was a kid, I knew nothing about babies, nothing, nothing about, bo I was so curious to see how my younger sister was going to do this. Like, what do you like learn about bottles or like, where do you, what bottles you even buy? Like I was so fascinated. She could even figure out how to do this, what diapers to get. She taught me everything. It was great. And then when I had Winnie, you know, we, um, we just, uh, it just came so natural. I don't know. I, I got, so I kind of said right from the get go, I want to change as many of the dirty diapers as I can because I want to be so comfortable with it. I thought I was going to be leaving the situation relatively soon to go back out on the road. So uh, my plan was, let me get as much of this dadding in as I can. And then it turned into like a pandemic. Yeah. So, and, um, and here we still are. Yeah. So now I'm changing diapers like, you know, a Marine changes a rifle. You know, I'm like blindfolded, and like, <laughs> you know, just like totally like, so again you're you're putting a nail on that that uh, head that i said earlier that more more dads out there need to be like tyler hilton man amazing oh, no. not scared of the diaper okay couple more questions and one i just came up with and it is absolutely relevant we'll get to that in a moment uh tyler hilton you can play one show with any artist living or dead that you have not played with yet who's it gonna be okay i would definitely say that it would be it would be muddy waters because the vibe is like, even though I love Elvis and I love all these like people and I, there's something about muddy waters, that blues musician that I always go back to. And I'm like, I know this doesn't make like any sense, whatever, but I feel like he's my spirit animal. And like, ever okay. since I was like young, I was like, there's something about this dude that really like speaks to me and there. And the spirit of him kind of like, I don't know, like fueled so much of like my youth and my music. And I don't know, there's something, and it wouldn't just be seeing the show. It wouldn't just be playing the show. It would be being around someone vibey like that in their like soupy element of playing music. I would just like to be near that, you know? So anyway, Muddy Waters. Yeah, that would be the guy. There yeah. you go. All right. Same question, but you can co-star with any actor, living or dead or actress on a movie. Who's it going to be? I don't mean to be so cheesy, but it would be James Dean, you know, because when I was a kid, man, I just thought he was like the greatest thing ever. And I learned everything about him. And I thought I just thought the 50s were so cool. And I just thought something about if I could be in a movie with him and we could be sitting in our actor chair, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, talking about 50s era things. I'd be like, this is the greatest moment of my life. So I think and that era of movie making is so kind of cool. I think that would be awesome. That'd yeah, be awesome. my my dad graduated high school in 1955. Wow. So he lived it and and grandpa took a lot of pictures so i got to see a lot of a lot of the cool wow. family history during that time oh i know right okay what a crazy year i feel like elvis just taken off when did james dean die 55 i think anyway it all happened yeah. like right there right. you know mm -hmm. and he, world war ii is only like 10 years away was like just 10, 10 years, years ago gone. you know and yeah Vietnam's was only 10 years away it's wow. yeah i crazy. never thought about right. that yeah mm -hmm. it's like nuts i know okay i'm gonna forget these questions cool, uh, cool. what was it uh, what was it? uh uh okay the advice we went through we did the who you're gonna play with uh oh oh, 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 oh okay here it is um this is a fun one i don't ask every episode it all depends on the guest and how i feel about how they are and having a good time with you so i think 
you're going to appreciate this. And I promise you up front, I'm not trying to trick you, but I do have to forewarn you that the <laughs> answer to this question, I'm still searching for someone to do better than a particular person who I will let you know who it was when we're done. I'm looking for a better answer than what this guy said to this question. And here we go. What is one thing Tyler Hilton cannot leave the house without? Oh, man. Oh, man. I got to be honest. It's not that funny, but it's it's an AirPod, man. I got an AirPod in my ear just about every hour of the day that I'm not, like, okay. talking All to right. someone and else. And that AirPod. is perfectly fine and a typical answer. That is great. <laughs> is it- now, now, when I tell you about the answer to this question, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do one of these. I can't wait. And uh, you're gonna go, why didn't I think of that? I, I guarantee it. So I asked that question of a lot of people. As I said, I work in radio, so I've had the opportunity to interview countless amount of musicians and bands and whatnot over the years. And George Thorogood answered oh that question with out skipping a beat. What's one thing I can't leave my house without? Well, pff, kissing my wife. Dang. <laughs> right wow and it makes us all go oh man i am a poor excuse for a husband <laughs> now we got that now i'm gonna start using that i'm not gonna there give any go. credit too feel like, free feel free if you can add in kissing your daughter too and then you'll you got a beat yeah oh yeah that's a good there one go. dang yeah. i had a good buddy who was on tour with him forever and said he was like the coolest guy loved him like loved george thorogood i was like What's George Thorogood like? He's like the greatest. Like Dude, the he's greatest. so cool. I man. love him. He really is. What you want to hear? I feel like you want to know that George Thorogood's cool. It's always a bummer when someone's like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we hate That's that. Cool. All right, I, I've got one question that, as I said, is actually relatable to pop culture right now. Um, did Chris Rock deserve it? <laughs> Dude, that was so uncomfortable. No, was it man. fake or was, was it real? Is what I want to know. I don't know. I was like, that like kind of sent me into a tailspin. I was like. Yeah, I know. Uncomfortable. I was just like, eh. you're in your own house, in your own couch, with no one around, and I'm, I'm, I'm sweating and anxious and turning red. What, what is happening here? It, I know. It, was, it felt like it felt like like I mean, you know, be, I, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Like to me, it felt like so inappropriate. It's like when you're at somebody's house and all of a sudden they're like screaming at each other. I'm like, what yeah, is happening. Here? I, I, I didn't even really watch nice. it, but my wife had it. said the next day, like, hey, did you hear what happened with uh, Will Smith? And we're like, no. She's like. I can't oh. wait to tell you and to show you this video. I was like, what happened with Will Smith? I just like, almost but like anyway. gave me a stomach ache. I was like, that is crazy stuff. And I forgot, yeah. like, having to get to talk about it with anyone. But yeah. All right. So there you have it. He is Tyler Hilton, that. American singer, songwriter, actor extraordinaire. You can check him out on old episodes of One Tree Hill. And I highly recommend his appearance as Elvis in Walk the Line. By the way, we didn't even touch on that. But Probably one of the uh, greatest movies of our time. Good actually. job in that one, man. That yeah, is thank you. just thank you. big, 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 big fan. Um, I want to thank you so very much for coming on the podcast. Of course, man, thank you guys for having happy. me. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, for everybody watching and listening to this live, thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you. And to anyone who may be watching this later down the line, as it is on the YouTube, we uh, kindly ask you subscribe, leave a comment, like it hate it, whatever, either or works. We appreciate you and we love you so much. Thanks for checking us out. Dadcast.co. Once again, he is Tyler Hilton. Thanks, man. Thanks. Dads. Dads. Yes. Dads. Dads. <laughs> <laughs> cool, no, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thank you. And uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Your agent will be in touch right. with you. And all I can say nice at this point, it. since Nick already kind of blew it, I hope you say yes. <laughs> And we'll leave it at that. Okay. All it's right. going to be All amazing. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool, guys. All right, man. Now, how do I end end a live video? That's that's the oh, there it is. It's up top. <laughs> All right. All, All right. right. You guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. And for everyone again watching and listening live, you're awesome. We appreciate you. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You guys. Later. Why is it still on? <laughs>